In this video, I'm gonna go over all the camera gear that I either had in the past, which is more on the cheap side, or currently use, which is a little bit more expensive, throughout my astrophotography journey. So depending on your budget and depending on which stage you are at as an astrophotographer, you will probably find something interesting that you can get for yourself to upgrade your setup, or maybe even get started altogether. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about first about the camera, because the camera is probably the first thing you buy. And the camera that I was starting with was the Canon 7070D. I was really happy with this camera. It is an APS-C camera from Canon, a DSLR, and it's a little bit above the Rebels. You know, all the Rebels are kind of like the entry-level cameras. And the 7070D itself right now costed about 670 US dollars as I was checking the price on Amazon. It has all the bells and whistles of modern cameras like Bluetooth connection, Wi-Fi connection, flip-out screen, and even a built-in intervalometer. And an intervalometer is quite handy in astrophotography because, for instance, you can shoot a Milky Way time-lapse or maybe you can just leave your camera on the tripod and take a couple of exposures of the exact same framing that you can then stack up in post-production in order to get a high-quality image. And by the way, I have a full video about that process for Milky Way images. You can check it out right here. But if your camera doesn't have an internal intervalometer and you already have some camera, you can also equip yourself with an external intervalometer and for instance, I am using to this day this Pixel TC252 intervalometer that pretty much works with every camera brand, not only with Canon. The cool thing about it is that it has a detachable cable and you can pretty much get a cable that will fit the shutter release port in your camera and have that working with any kind of camera brand. This costs like uh, 64 US dollars when I was checking it, so I think this is an excellent value for money. And then of course you need to put your camera on something stable if you want to take long exposure shots of the night sky. So you need some kind of a tripod and the tripod that I'm using is actually not on Amazon because this is a Polish brand. This is called, if you're interested, Camrock TS53, but I'm showing it to you today because the point is that you don't need an expensive fancy tripod. You don't need a super sturdy large tripod in order to take photos of the night sky and have exposures like 20, 30 or even a couple of minutes which we will get into in just a moment. You can definitely have a cheap tripod. This tripod I bought for 50 bucks I think and I will link down below some other options which are in the price range of from 50 to 100 dollars which I think could be excellent. And a very good idea if you're taking long exposure shots of the night sky and you have your tripod like on a grassy terrain or maybe some a little bit muddy soil or something is to press it down in order for it to not move around and not sink into the ground anymore. So what you can do if you have a screw like on this tripod you can take this guy, this is a super clamp from Small Rig. This is, I love this accessory. You can buy this for like nine bucks. This is the regular price. And you can pretty much mount this onto anything, onto any kind of pole or something. And on the back, it has a quarter inch socket and a three eighths of an inch socket that you can mount any kind of accessory to that. And you can also screw it in here, like I do, just like that. And then I can use uh, this lever that is on this side. And then I can hang my backpack from it or something heavy and that way, way down. My tripod and if your tripod doesn't have a hook or doesn't have a screw or anything like this you can still use the super clamp from small rig because you can just use the clamp itself to clamp it onto this column so right now as you can see i have it tightened to the center column and then i can use this lever as well i can put it down and i can hang in something from this and then if you want to upgrade your tripod because pretty much any tripod you might already have maybe it only takes to upgrade the ball head in order to get a whole new experience this is the benro ib0 ball head and i can highly recommend this ball head. This ball head is very sturdy, it locks in really confidently. When I use the telephoto on this ball head it doesn't like you know sink in as I tighten it. It has a third screw right here because you know I can loosen the ball head and I can move around the ball head and it's a little bit tough to move around but if I loosen this, this is the sort of friction control. If I loosen that it goes very very easily so I can control that how much friction and resistance does this ball head have if I need to reframe my shot just a little bit. So Benro IB0, highly recommend it. And if you get your camera, you probably end up with having a kit lens. And this lens is not the best lens for astrophotography, but you can upgrade to a better lens. And this is exactly what I did because I replaced this lens with a Rokinon 16 mm f2 lens. The Rokinon lens can also go by the brand name of Samyang in Europe. And this lens is fantastic. 
it is very wide the f2.0 aperture is so much larger than the f3.5 on the wide angle length of the kit lens and that allows me to gather more light on my sensor in the same time period as my shutter is open that way i can use a lower iso and end up with a higher quality image and this lens bear in mind it is a fully manual lens manual aperture manual focus so you need to focus manually but if you're shooting the night sky you need to focus manually anyway so that's not really an issue and this lens is fantastic it is cheap because it costs only like $300 check out for instance this image this is one of the images that I'm very proud of I, I, I think I took like eight or something exposures then I stacked them together to produce this final image and I also removed light pollution using a clever technique about which I have a video right here so you can totally check that out it's quite a popular video of mine but then I figured that I want something even wider than 16 millimeters I wanted something wider so I ended up getting a Tokina 11 to 20 f 2.8 lens and this lens is absolutely phenomenal I can definitely tell you that this is the best ultra wide angle zoom lens with autofocus for APS-C cameras it has a range of 11 to 20 which is not the widest range but it definitely gives you a variety of possibilities to frame up your shots it has a constant f2.8 aperture throughout the entire zoom range which is quite unique when it comes to APS-C lenses at this kind of price point because the lens only costs at the regular price like 450 bucks and I think this is a very good price for this lens this lens is insanely sharp it is sharper than the Canon ultra wide angle zoom lenses and it has a better aperture and it is fantastic the only downside of this lens is that the autofocus on this lens is a little bit noisy so if you want to use it for like videos and vlogging like I was intending to use this lens as well you may run into the noise issue but I have a walk around you can check by seeing the video right here after all Tokina 11 to 20 I think this is a phenomenal lens if I was shooting still on the APS-C cameras I would definitely still own that lens and speaking of cameras finally I decided to upgrade my APS-C camera onto a full-frame camera because for astrophotography if you have a big bigger sensor it's like with a bigger aperture you can collect more light in the same amount of time and I upgraded my camera to the Canon EOS R which I am shooting on right now and I absolutely love this camera this is a mirrorless camera compared to the 7070 which was a DSLR so it has a very bright EVF it has all the features like focus guiding focus peaking and all that goodness Canon EOS R is a fantastic camera and right now it is pretty much cheaper than ever because a few months ago uh, Canon R5 and R6 were really which made the price of the R, the original Canon EOS R, drop significantly. Currently, when I checked it when I was recording this video, it was priced at about $1,800 on Amazon, which I think is a very good price for this camera because this camera is fantastic. But if you want something cheaper at a similar ballpark, you can actually get the Canon EOS R P, which costs only like $1,300, so it's a significant price drop. But the quality of these two cameras are very, very similar. However, if you are willing to spend a little bit more, you can actually get the Canon EOS R A which is an astrophotography dedicated camera and the way it is dedicated towards astrophotography it has two important features among maybe other small things but two are very important one of them is the fact that the sensor on this camera is modified towards astrophotography so it picks up a little bit more from the red spectrum which is very present on the night sky so you get richer colors in your nebulas if you're doing like deep sky astrophotography nebula galaxies something like this so if you are willing to spend uh, $2,500 because this is how much this camera is if you're willing to spend this money definitely you can check out this camera and it is also capable of taking photos during the day it's not only for astrophotography but the colors may be a little bit off which you can probably correct with stuff like white balance or HSL adjustments in Lightroom but the problem was that I, when I got the Canon EOS R I wanted to use my Tokina 11 to 20 on it but that lens is made for APS-C cameras so I ended up with a need to actually replace the Tokina lens as well so I sold that and I got two prime lenses one of them is the one that I'm recording this video right now which is the RF 35 f 1.8 lens but the lens that I'm shooting most of my Milky Way images is actually this Canon EF 24 millimeters prime lens it is also only f 2.8 which for a prime lens is not very exciting and maybe that's why this lens is very underrated and not very popular I actually have a separate video about this lens as well you can check it out right here or down below but I love 
this lens. You can check out, for instance, this photo that I took with this lens. This lens is very sharp. It's even sharper than newer lenses. I compared it against the RF 24 to 70, and this one, this little guy, was actually sharper than the RF lens, which is quite amazing. And this lens costed, when I checked it, 550 bucks. But if you want something with a wider aperture, specifically for astrophotography, you can actually get the Sigma 24 millimeters f1.4, which is significantly wider than f2.8. And the Sigma costs about $650, which I think it's uh, it's a little bit more expensive. But if you want that bigger aperture, you can definitely go with the Sigma. And other two options I can recommend for the full frame camera is the Sigma 20 millimeters f1.4. This one costs about $900, the regular price of that. So this is the most expensive out of the four. It is 20 millimeters, so it's a bit wider, but it's a bit more expensive, bear in mind that. And the fourth lens that I want to recommend is the Rokinon 14 millimeters f2.8. There's a version with autofocus actually of this lens, fairly new design, and also an older one with only manual focus, which will be cheaper. The autofocus version costs around 600 bucks, so it's a similar price to the Sigma 24, so you can choose out of the four which one is the most appealing to you. But I think you don't need to push hard to get the widest aperture you can get in a lens because the price goes higher and you need to stop it down anyway in order to get a decent quality on the corner. So the better option, if you want to step up your quality, is to actually finally get an Astro Tracker. And this is exactly what I did at this stage. I got the Skywatcher Star Adventure, which I absolutely love. I have a ton of videos about this tracker. I will link the entire playlist either right here or down below. I I have videos about how to use it, how to set it up. People love these videos. They even say that they are better than the Skywatcher original videos, so definitely check them out. And the tracker, basically, long story short, it allows you to take much longer exposures than normally, because normally you are limited by the rotation of the Earth around itself, and that causes the stars to apparently move across the sky. So you're limited with your shutter speed, and if you use that, if you set it up properly, it rotates this base in just the right speed in order to exactly compensate for the Earth's rotational movement. And that way you can take single exposures that have like a couple of minutes of, of length, like two minutes, three minutes, four, five minutes, even maybe with wide angle, totally possible using a tracker. So I can highly recommend. This is a very, very popular model. It costs around 400 bucks, which I think is an excellent price for the stuff you can do with this tracker. You can even use telephoto lenses or small telescopes in order to get into deep sky astrophotography. For instance, check out this photo of the Andromeda galaxy that I recently took. I use this tracker and just a telephoto lens and the result is amazing. And the last item on my list that I wanted to share with you is a light pollution filter, because even if you have a very wide aperture, a fast lens, a full frame camera, a star tracker that allows you to take long exposures and gather and gather and gather a lot of light, it's all pointless if most of the light that you are gathering is the street lights that are polluting the faint light from whatever you actually want to photograph out there in the cosmos. So if you have a lot of light pollution in the place that you're at, maybe you live in the city, maybe close to a city, you can actually run into this issue where the city lights overwhelm the entire sky and you cannot really shoot anything. So what you can do if you don't want to drive like hundreds of kilometers or miles away every single time, every single night that you want to do some astrophotography, you can actually get one of those light pollution filters that is supposed to cut down the light pollution from the street lights and actually make it possible to capture what is beyond that. It does that by filtering certain spectrum of color, so be aware that it is going to change the entire color profile of your images. I actually have a video on how to fight that exact problem by using a custom color profiles made in Lightroom. Definitely check out that video if you want to get into any kind of astrophotography filters. I will link it probably down below so you can check that out. This filter actually is not on Amazon. I couldn't find it. This is the Astronomic CLS filter. It's a German company. I will link down below the link to their website. You can get this filter directly from their website. It costs around $230. It's a clip-in design and you can clip that in between the lens and the camera on the back and that way you don't have to worry about the diameter of your lens. You can even use lenses with bulbous front elements that doesn't accept uh, standard shutter filters. And for instance, take a look at this shot. This is what I have taken using the 24 millimeters from Canon, using the CLS filter from Astronomic and my Canon ESR and by far, I think this is my favorite photo of the Milky Way that I have ever taken. So I can definitely check out these filters. If you want to pick up something on Amazon and take advantage of 
with Prime Days. I will link down below to some other similar options. I know that Optolong is producing a fantastic filters in this kind of category as well. All right, and that's pretty much all for me. The rig that I currently use is the Skywatcher Star Adventure, Canon EOS R, Canon EF24 f2.8 lens and sometimes an astronomic CLS filter and sometimes not depending on the light conditions that I find myself in. Definitely check out the links down below in the description. Hopefully you can get something awesome for yourself and improve your imagery. In the meantime you can like this video if you like this. I would really appreciate that. Comment down below if you have any questions and also you can consider subscribing to my channel because I post pretty much new videos every single week. I have a ton of content. Basically my channel is all about stuff that you can do with your camera and right now you can check out this playlist with my all of the astrophotography tutorials that I have and also you can check out this video I think this might be interesting to you as well and until next time hopefully see you in another video bye bye